I'm Nun Fernandes, I'm an engineer and a producer, and today we're going to talk about vocals. To me, vocals are the core of a song. People listen to songs because of what they make them feel, and usually that's the vocal. Producing a vocal session is a little bit like being a therapist. You have to be attentive of their mood, their energy level. Sometimes singers are very perfectionist and they'll want to keep doing a line over and over. You have to be able to tell them no, that you, you've got it and that you should move on to something else. The available energy to sing in a session is limited and maybe you can get two hours of really good singing from a singer in a day. You can't have them in the booth singing for an hour straight. You have to make them take breaks if they don't want to. And you have to manage their mood also. If the song is about being angry and they're in a super good mood and not really transmitting the emotion of the song, you'll have to make them angry. And that might be that they'll be angry at you, but if you get the performance at the end, that's all that matters. I'm sure you'll be friends in the end. And the main thing I think you have to make sure that the vocalist is comfortable and feels at ease with you and the room and the microphone have a nice mood lighting going, whatever makes them feel at ease so that they can perform. You don't need to spend thousands of pounds renting a studio to record vocals. If you have a big enough room at home, bedroom or whatever, make it look nice with a nice vibe. Make sure you control the environment with one of these or a reflection filter. You can have good professional results at home. A microphone is important, but it's, I don't feel it's the main thing. You just have to find something that sounds okay and that they're comfortable singing into. Maybe you have a U47 in your mic cabinet, but if the singer is uncomfortable standing in front of that big metal cylinder, you're not going to get a great performance. But there are several different types of microphones and you'll get different sounds out of them. So you can use uh, large diaphragm condenser microphones and usually they'll have a really nice high end and add a little bit of presence to the vocal. But they can be too sensitive. And if you're doing a heavy metal album or a heavy rock thing, you might be better off using a dynamic microphone. So you'll have to try out a couple of different microphones. But just keep in mind, you don't need to spend thousands of pounds getting a microphone to get good results. Most of the times you'll be using the microphone in a cardioid pattern. and when you're in that pattern, microphones suffer from a proximity effect. So you have to keep in mind that if the singer goes closer to the microphone, there'll be a boost in low end frequencies. So it might be, if you want to, if you're recording a very intimate, romantic vocal, you might want the male singer to have a deeper sound. You might want him closer to the microphone. But if you want a more ethereal sound and the singer tends to sing close to the microphone, you might have to do some EQing or choose a different polar pattern. So when tracking in, you might be tempted to use some processing on the vocal. I'll probably use a high pass filter just to take low rumble because there's no useful information down there. And if I'm in a studio, I might monitor with compression, but I won't print that to tape. But some people like printing the compression to tape and committing to a sound while recording. If I do track with compression, which happens occasionally, I just want to see the needle moving slightly. Never pass 3 dB gain reduction, because EQ you can undo more or less. After printing compression, you'll be in trouble if you compress too much. Usually it's convenient that the singer can hear themselves. You have to send up a good cue mix. If they're not comfortable with what they're hearing in their headphones, forget it. You're not going to get a good performance out of them. What usually singers will need to be able to listen clearly is the harmony of the song and themselves so they can sing in pitch correctly. Some singers like a lot of reverb, some hate reverb, so that's something you have to find out when you're tracking. Bear in mind that too much reverb might hide some tuning problems. Regarding tuning software to enhance a performance, I feel that if you have a great performance with a great emotional delivery of the lyric and a couple of things that are out of tune, you can try to get them, but most likely you won't have the same emotion to it. And if it's just a couple of things, just fix them. What I don't believe in is having somebody 
just hack a vocal and then creating a performance on Melodyne or something. The performance needs to be there and then you can slightly enhance it with tuning. I hope this was helpful and it will help improve your productions. Thanks for watching.